Hey guys, this is Josh with the Depth Dave channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the Caterpillar Brake Saver. Now, before I get into what the Caterpillar Brake Saver is, I need to discuss what this video is not. This video is not a detailed removal, installation, or rebuilding of a brake saver. This video is discussing what a brake saver is, how it operates, why you would need one, why you may not want one, and basically any history I could find on it. Now, unfortunately, I've been waiting for a truck to come in the shop with a brake saver for several months so I can make this video, but haven't seen one, and I'm not sure when I'll see one again. They can be hit or miss. Sometimes it'll be a year or more before you'll see them, but I still want to discuss what they are because I get questions on them sometimes, so hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. So let's discuss the origins of the brake saver. Now, before I discuss that, remember, I was not around when the brake saver was developed or in or a very common item, which would have been the 60s and 70s, and I'm going off information that I could do in a few hours of research before making this video. So, in the 1960s, Caterpillar was making a overhead cam engine, a dual overhead cam engine, called the 1693. And the 1693 was a very popular engine, but it shared a common problem with all diesel engines in that it does not create much vacuum during operation. Now, why does that matter? Well, if you are driving your gasoline powered car or truck and when you coast to a stop if you just let off on the throttle generally the engine will help slow down the vehicle that's because of the vacuum created in the cylinders diesels don't create that just by their very nature and also they're generally much heavier loaded trucks are than cars so they had a problem in that of course you can use your air brakes your service brakes to slow down the truck but that creates a couple problems it wears out the brakes quickly also, the brakes can overheat or crack or fail, and then you have a downhill situation that is extremely dangerous. Jacobs, which was a engine retarding brake, was a valve, meaning it uses the engine valve brake system to slow on the engine. But Cat was not using them, so Cat decided to design their own hydrodynamic brake system. And the way that they did that was they took engine oil and found a way to basically put a torque converter into the engine between the crankshaft and the flywheel before the transmission. Now, it's not exactly a torque converter. So what's a torque converter? A torque converter is in an automatic transmission. It uses fluid to help transfer energy from the crankshaft into the transmission to help turn the wheels. No torque converter, no automatic transmission. Now, a brake saver, however, while it uses similar components and fluid, engine oil, it slows down the crankshaft instead of helping the drive shaft move. So, how exactly does a brake saver work? Well, a brake saver works by taking engine oil out of the engine and then forcing it into the brake saver unit, which is in the flywheel housing. This works on a principle that Moving fluids against each other basically creates friction, which absorbs energy. Now, it doesn't dissipate the energy. You can't do that. It absorbs the rotational force from the crankshaft and turns it into heat energy, which the oil absorbs, and then the oil is drained out of the brake saver unit and goes through the oil cooler, where the heat is then exchanged between the engine oil and the engine coolant, and then the engine coolant takes that heat and dissipates it through the radiator, gets rid of it. Now you might be wondering like, okay, well, the engine has to get rid of this excess heat. Wouldn't that cause the engine to overheat? Well, no, because if you're using a brake saver, that means you are in an un-power generating time of engine operation. Oh. Wrong. That was poorly worded, but basically what it means is you're probably going downhill. So you're not applying any throttle. So your engine will not really be producing hardly any heat because it's not producing any power. So while you will be dissipating heat into the cooling system, it's only when the engine's basically not producing any heat. Now, just as a side note, Jacobs also relies on force and heat to work, but their systems open the exhaust valves, which allows the heat to dissipate out the exhaust stack. So they don't, they're not injecting that heat into the cooling system. That's on a Jacobs system. The brake saver injects it directly into the engine oil. Now I'm going off testimonials here from people that have had brake savers or have brake savers. I've interviewed a few people 
And you can all you can have an engine with a brake saver and Jacobs or compression brakes. Those were in later models like the 346B and the 346E and C15s. You could have both units. It's just got rarer and rarer to see the brake saver. Now, most people will say if they have a brake saver, the brake saver works a lot better than the Jacobs do. And that's good. And you can use both at the same time or one or the other. So it saves a lot of service brake wear. It slows the engine down. It slows the vehicle down. It sounds like it's it's all wins, right? There's no... What's the problem with the brake saver? Why don't every truck still use a brake saver? Well, one is cat doesn't put engines in trucks anymore. But very few cats ever had brake savers if you've ever worked on cats. But why would very few have the brake saver installed? While there's many advantages to the brake saver, there's a lot of disadvantages as well. One of those is cost. The cost of adding all the brake saver, extra components or changing components, could be several thousand dollars to the vehicle price, the truck price itself. Now, why is that? I mean, the engine already has an oil cooler and has an oil pump. It already has a flywheel housing and a flywheel. Well, you're adding or modifying almost all the components in the oil system. Here's what changes if you have a brake saver instead of a normal non-brake saver engine. For one, it has a different flash file from the ECM if the engine has an ECM, meaning it's a 346E or later engine. Also, only C15s, from what I could find, had brake savers, and then we're talking in the electronic area here. I didn't see any, I could not find any evidence that C13s, C11s, C10s, or C12s ever had any sort of brake saver units on them. The brake savers modified the oil pump. You needed a high capacity oil pump, which is about twice as big, and of course, much heavier and more expensive than your normal oil pump. It modified all of the tubing inside and outside of your oil pan because the brake saver has its own dedicated oil lines and it picks up its own dedicated circuit off the oil pump, at least from the research I could see. Also, the oil pan's different. Generally, it's a higher capacity. Not only that, it has extra ports for the extra tubes that go into and out of the oil pan. You then have, of course, all of the tubes going from the oil pan to the oil cooler to the remote-mounted oil filter, which you're going to also have, to the brake saver unit itself. You'll have a brake saver control valve, and then you have the brake saver housing which bolts to the rear structure you have the brake saver stator seals and rotor then you also have the hand control valve and you could have an automatic on off switch in the dash you also have to run an air supply regulated 50 psi to the control valve that adds a lot of stuff so by adding all this stuff you're adding weight to the vehicle but you are increasing the engine braking capabilities so what are the other downsides other than the weight and the additional cost? Well, you've now made doing any repairs to the engine. Let's say you have an engine rebuild coming up. It's going to be much, much, much more expensive because there's a lot more components to remove, especially on the bottom end of the engine. Pulling the oil pan is much harder now. Not only that, oil changes are more expensive because generally you have more fluid in the system a couple more gallons and most people don't know this but you're supposed to drain the brake saver itself and the oil pan when doing a service so a lot of times you'll get an oil change and not all the oil was drained out only out of the pan not out of the brake saver unit so that can cause problems the brake saver unit itself though is a frictionless system outside of the actual function of it meaning there's no metal to metal contact and there's no real adjustments or anything that have to be made. Uh, they are, they can be a problem though in that there are a lot more sources of oil leaks potentially now. You have this huge system with lots of seals between the crankshaft and the flywheel, which can cause leaks. And if they do leak, then you gotta pull the transmission out and then find a shop that can actually work on these, which is not that common anymore. You also have additional lines now all over the engine that have to be resealed if they're leaking. And the other thing I didn't discuss is the oil cooler. The oil cooler is about twice as big on a brake saver engine as on a normal engine. And of course, that is because the brake saver unit is generating a lot of heat and forcing that heat into the oil when it's being operated. You would mostly, the only times I would ever see them were on heavy haul trucks in a couple Kenworths and a couple Peterbilts from what I could find. 
People that do have them seem to love them though. They do work really well and they can really extend the service life of your service brakes. So even if they are leak prone and can cause you a little more money on oil changes and whatnot, that might make up for service brake replacements. And especially in some sort of heavy haul application, you can utilize your jakes and your brake saver to help really pull that, that service intervals between your brakes down significantly. In fact, if using the jakes on high and the brake saver at the same time, it can actually cause so much braking force it can damage your drivetrain. So on the E, on the electronic engines, there was actually a service letter that would not allow the jakes to operate on high with the brake saver. That's how well they work. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's kind of technical. I try to add whatever pictures and information I could there. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Thanks for watching.